after 14 episodes, we have filled in as much as we can on this side of the map. And now we are entering a very exciting stage of Fish Enclave City because we have finally crossed the river and will start to further expand and grow. If you are not exhilarated by this, you should be because this expansion is like a restart from the beginning of your city. Except this time, we have way more than enough bank and it's all thanks to our industries. We also get to start with a significant population of educated citizens and we have unlocked enough milestones to utilize various modes of transportation and other structures at our disposal. In other words, this expansion restart is practically like starting a city with unlimited money and progression unlocked mod. This and the upcoming episodes will be my advanced step-by-step -step guide on my calculated process in city planning to keep your city thriving, which is my formula for success, to build a city with no to minimal issues from zero to over 100,000 population. Ladies and gentlemen, to all aspiring mayors, this is Captain Obvious, and I present to you part one of the Advanced Guide to Transportation and City Planning. Welcome to the mid-game. Step 1. Terrain Management Before you start thinking about your road network, scope out the terrain and see if you're happy with what you got. The original landscape is relatively flat, which is convenient for us. Except that we need to work on our coastlines, especially if you intend to add ferry stops. I call this the Save Knees, Lower the Coastlines campaign. I personally value my own knees, and I'm pretty sure that our sims will too. Be a thoughtful mayor and lower your coastlines before you build anything on them. I know that there are some mayors that would prefer to keep the original landscape and work around the terrain, but the coastlines have tremendous value and design opportunities. But more importantly, Let's save knees and lower the terrain. I am going to start making up friendly quotes to help mayors remember important things, and in the distant future, I could make merch with these ridiculous captain quotes. Whenever we expand to a new area, I know that everyone is very excited on creating your road network, whether you are going for a more natural, organic road layout or precision grids. Whatever suits your fancy is completely your decision. But before you create your road network, it is highly recommended that you first plan what major projects you want to build for your whole city and where you want to place them. Step 2. City Planning Let us reset the clock to the very beginning of the city. The very first major project for your city should always be to build your economy with industry and you should plan where to place them. So for this instance, I can see that a cluster of resources are on this side of the map. Therefore, I plan to have all my industries isolated in this corner. If you play vanilla, your city planning starts with what tiles to unlock and what to place in those tiles. Modded players just have a larger playground to build on. To have a better chance of success, you must plan exactly where all the four industry types will be together with the unique factories. A city service that must be planned is your garbage locations. That is plural. You need to determine your garbage locations and I cannot emphasize this enough. Every new expansion should have its own garbage area. Accumulated garbage in your city will lead to sickness and if not addressed, will lead to death. Instead of adding more hospitals or death care, start with the source of the problem, which is garbage management. My advice on garbage location should be on the edge of your borders. The garbage pollution is unavoidable but it is less likely to stick out if it is situated at the edge of your city rather than right smack in the middle of your city. Be careful that you don't place your garbage facilities on the edge of the border with trees. 
Otherwise, you will not have access to the trees beyond the border and the ground pollution would seep through the border and cause the trees to wither throughout the entire lifetime of your city. Therefore, look for a clear area with no trees and place your garbage facilities there. So the question now is, how many garbage facilities do you need? I cluster an average of four different types of garbage buildings together rather than spreading them apart. But that would also depend on the density of the area. Four facilities might be too many, but it is a safe number. The types of garbage buildings would be your choice. You can strictly use just recycling centers or if you want variety, mix them up with different types of garbage disposal structures and you may also sprinkle a few dirty yellow industry with your garbage facilities. Despite the fact that we have offices available, having some yellow dirty industry can still be beneficial for your city to produce its own goods, especially when your industry DLC areas are far away from the other parts of your city. This is of course completely optional. Other major projects that should be planned include campus areas, zoos, amusement parks, stadiums, concerts, the location of your airport, and any other large-scale projects. Again, the reason why we want to plan where to place these projects is to prevent redoing your road networks. Believe it or not, road planning comes last, or at least in my eccentric out-of-the-box point of view. If you like the content and you learned something, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It's just one small click from you to help support the guy who loves the game that shares all the tricks and tips so everyone can build their dream city that you may learn to love the game as much as I do. Step number three, transportation. We will divide the different modes of transportation into tiers. Tier 1 have the most passenger capacity averaging at about 150 passengers and are the best and the fastest means to get around the city from one game tile to other multiple tiles across your city. These vehicles include trains, monorails, above and underground metro. I'm going to whip out the completed Vanilla City from Season 1 because there is no better example than something that is already completed and proven. Let's check out this train line. We have a station here that caters to this area, and notice the distance to the next station, which is about one tile apart. However, the next station is relatively close, yet they cater to different areas. More importantly, Every stadium should have its own Tier 1 station. At some point, you may encounter train traffic, especially when it is attached to an outside connection because cargo trains and outside passenger trains share the same track. So make sure to provide bypass tracks for your stations. For example, this is a passenger station, while this is a cargo station, and they share the same track. If there was a passenger train that is stopped at the station, the cargo train won't have to wait for the passenger train to proceed and can simply take the bypass track to have a continuous route. I also advise to have just one or no stations to be interconnected from the outside. In this case, I've selected the station that is in front of the stadium that is allowed to accept intercity trains which makes sense while all other stations are turned off. The above ground metro is my new favorite mode of transportation, especially when they introduce this train metro hub from the Sunset Harbor DLC. The hub gives you an excuse to connect a train track, which is perfect. And check out that bypass route in action. The next station is somewhat perpendicular from the train station, which they eventually connect to this hub. However, the difference is that residents here do not have to travel all the way to the other side, which means less traveling with the use of private vehicles. Then we have these two stations that are relatively close to each other but are divided by a river. 
Notice how the train stations are two tiles apart and I didn't add a station here. If passengers needed to go in the middle tile, they could just take the metro and at least now they have options to either take the train or metro. Ideally, you'd want to have a tier 1 station on every tile. However, that does not mean that every tile should have a direct station that connects to the other tiles. For example, this monorail station connects to the game tile to the north but does not connect to the west tile. If passengers from the north wanted to go west, they just need to transfer from this monorail station and take the metro to head west. Therefore, the north station is indirectly connected to the west station despite the fact that they are not connected directly. The stadium from the north instead connects directly all the way down to the hub in front of the stadium skipping several tiles. Take note that this stadium is basically connected to all tiles on the map. Did you forget your pocket car? Take the train! Would be the quote to help mayors provide tier 1 stations in front of major establishments such as stadiums, concerts, casinos, airports, Chirp X, and the space elevator. But what if the sim doesn't live near a station? Let's say he lives here and wants to travel to the west tile. That's when tier 2 mode of transportation comes into play. Because of their limited passenger capacity, tier 2 modes of transportation are best utilized for within the same game tile or smaller depending on the density of the area. These vehicles include ferries, trams, buses, or trolley buses. If you ever wondered why you have hundreds to thousands of people waiting at bus stations, maybe because you've overextended your routes a little too far which in that case you should replace with a higher capacity and faster means of transportation. The job of tier 2 transportation is to gather passengers from within a tile distance to direct them to your tier 1 stations so they could travel further without having to whip out their pocket cars. So now this tier 2 is indirectly connected to the west tile through tier 1 stations. For new players, I would highly suggest to prefer trams over buses because buses becomes complicated as your city grows. Both trams and buses are considered as extra vehicles on the road and since trams have more passenger capacity than buses, there will be more buses than trams on the road which could cause more traffic. Ultimately, your goal for providing transportation for your city is to encourage commuting instead of driving which will result to less vehicles on the road and less traffic. But of course, you cannot neglect on providing highways on every tile of your city. If done properly, public transportation will be used for sims to get them home, to work, go shopping, and explore your city. While highways would mostly be used for trucks to import and export goods. As a result, your highways are more free for your trucks to roam because there is less private vehicles using the highways which improves your overall city traffic. And that, my fellow mayors, is how you hit more or less 90% traffic flow even beyond 100,000 population. However, despite the fact that you are able to conquer traffic, there is still the matter of pacifying your city that it doesn't encounter death waves, education, or employment issues which will be covered in upcoming episodes. Looking back at Fisher Enclave City, we've started the expansion by planning our transportation network. You can of course still start with your road network, but I feel that it's much safer to position your tier 1 stations and tier 2 routes, which would be the skeleton of your overall layout. Then it would be much easier to fill in those empty spaces. But of course, at any point in time, you can easily squeeze in underground metro. 
But if you are a more experienced mayor, challenge yourself by making all your tracks above ground. You would have no to minimal tunneling and would absolutely be a tedious process but satisfying and worthwhile at the end. There are also tier 3 modes of transportation which are leisure vehicles that includes blimps and helicopters. The tier 3 guide will be a separate video because there's a lot of haters for blimps and helicopters due to their inefficiency of being both the slowest and least passenger capacity mode of transportation. I completely understand your hate and the lack of desire to use them. However, be open-minded and don't hate what you don't understand. Tier 3 transportation will be explained in a future video. This area will be reserved for our first campus and we will also add in a stadium. As much as possible, I try to squeeze in every DLC into one city. In one of my old offline cities, I was able to use every vanilla building in the game and they all managed to fit in 9 tiles. This city, however, will only have two campus areas. There is just not enough landmass to accommodate all three campus areas because the buildings are extremely large. Speaking of which, we will avoid zoning anything in this area until we have reached the max level of the campus. When all the campus buildings are available to us, that is when we can properly measure how much space we have left to zone other structures. And we may also have the same predicament with the zoo area because we are not completely sure how much space we'll need until all the zoo buildings are available. I choose this area for the zoo because it has this neat little lake which we can use to place down our sea life enclosure. Whenever you plan out your zoo, try to find a great spot with water to add in that sea life enclosure which is probably the best animal exhibit in your zoo. This monorail track is open to have a station by the avenue but for the meantime I opted not to because there is already another station by the river which would make things redundant. Nevertheless, it's comforting to have that option available. I definitely love how this monorail track is ripping right through our organic highway interchange. And notice how I avoid making precise perpendicular interchanges. Instead of having these mechanical small letter T's, we instead have a natural looking italic letter X as our interchange. If you are new here and haven't noticed, this is a vanilla build series where we don't have the fancy move it, traffic manager, or anarchy mods. The only mods we are utilizing are visual mods to make this video easier to see and comprehend. So if you play on console, PS4, or Xbox, the entire city build can be replicated on console. To make the height of the rail smooth, we are using the trench bridge technique which you dig a hole as deep as a trench, then build your bridge over it, and as a result, will give you that perfect aligned sloped bridge. Alright, let's check this track. Oh yeah, look at that! The rail and the roads are so smooth. She got the curves all in the right places. Can't wait to ride that monorail over this interchange, but we still need buildings to complement the trip. And of course, we have the rail going alongside the highway bridge where the passengers can look over the passing vehicles and under them would be passing ships. I would have placed the rail between the highway bridges, but unfortunately I did not plan that far and having the rail smoothly curve away from between the highway is always a nuisance, especially with the pillar placements and having it look natural. But who knows, perhaps at the end of the series I can do final touches and will completely redo that bridge just to accommodate that rail to go in between. I'm probably crazy enough to do it. The next few episodes will focus entirely on sustaining your city so it doesn't collapse. 
Your participation in the comments section is crucial because this is your opportunity to write your questions or whatever issues you may have with your city, which I can respond with a video. I'm planning out the rest of the episodes to close out this series and I want to make sure that I cover everything. Hence why I'm giving you guys the chance to point out topics that may not even registered in my radar. If you have previously asked a question in another video, feel free to ask it again here. I know that I've mentioned that we will cover death waves, but still feel free to comment that as well, so at least I get an idea on how many players encounter the same issues. I make these series and tutorials for you guys, and my satisfaction from creating these videos are how much I've helped players improve their gameplay. The objective of my videos is to get my viewers beyond the fundamentals of the game so you could focus on other things like design. And slowly yet surely, we will cover all major topics so you can start building your dream city and not worry about your city collapsing in the process. If you've learned something and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be notified of when a new video is released, hit that notification bell. This is Captain Obvious, I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next episode.